Hello, everybody. Uh, I am so excited to, well, actually, you know, I'm moderately interested in, <laughs> in uh, giving you all an update regarding my knee injury. And um, I feel like it's been ages since I did a kneecap recap. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining. Um, I wanted to give everybody an update regarding my knee injury um, and give you like an idea about what I'm doing every day because even I am like, wait, what, what did I do today? Um, I'm back in ballet class, which is unbelievable. I can stand at the bar and like do the moves and um, my knee feels sort of like weird, I guess. Like it, I don't know if any of you have ever sprained your ankle or anything, but like it takes a while for it to feel normal again. So I'm at the stage now where it's like, okay, it feels weird, but I can do it and it feels okay. Um, I did my first uh, center ballet class this week and was doing like adagio and tendus and stuff. But what I usually do is I do physical therapy two to three times a week, which I go to a sports therapist in Midtown. And then um, I'm doing things like, uh, they did blood flow restrictive stuff where it's like, uh, it makes it extra difficult if you don't have all your blood allowed to visit your limbs. It's like a, a pump thing that goes over your, your leg. And then um, do a lot of like squats and split squats and leg extensions with electrodes and things. And, um, oh, hi, everybody. Oh, okay, well, I'm glad you're all, yeah, keep, um, keep saying hello in the, in the comments because I'll get to that. I'll get to like a Q and A moment. Um, and first things first, it's 9 p.m. And do you know where your glass of whiskey is? I know where mine is. Yum. Uh, this is a Hibiki Japanese whiskey that I really like. Um, and look how cute this is. Uh, my boyfriend's mom got me these custom glasses with her favorite line from my book, which is, what is it? Apprehension thus effectively ignored, which I thought was incredibly kind and funny. Um, okay, so in PT, I'm doing uh, like, what are they called? Russian deadlifts, which have such an aggressive name if you ask moi. Um, uh, I'm doing the, like a trapezoid bar thing where I like put it down, pick it up, put it down, pick it up, put it down, pick it up. Um, I'm doing, uh, they work on it a lot because the scar tissue is such a pain in the ass. So I've got like crazy crunchy crackles all around my knee from the surgery, from the injury itself. Um, and it takes a while for that stuff to break up. So they do a lot of manual work on it, meaning they sort of just like massage and like crank it around. Um, and then uh, I have to stretch, it gets really tight, especially after I do class and stuff, I have to take time and stretch afterward because it feels like, you know, grandmother's knee. Um, and then usually after class, I do a workout, I go to the gym because, um, like when I'm dancing, I'm dancing 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. sometimes. And then sometimes I even have a show. And um, like, I feel like I'm not moving my body at all right now. And um, when I get back to dancing more and more, I don't want to feel like I've lost muscle, endurance, all of that stuff. And I wanna look cute for the summer, you know? So I go to the gym after I do ballet class. And then um, I have like all these I feel like very admin focused currently. I'm, I have like appointments and meetings and things like today I went and had a meeting with my publisher. I went to Penguin Random House and um, talked to them about the sort of like the rollout of the paperback of my book, which is coming this summer. And um, like that was really interesting. It's, it's so interesting. I don't know like how all of it works. I'm new to, to authorship, I suppose. Um, but it's been amazing and they're so, so helpful and tell me pretty much what to do and what to focus on. Um, oh, Isabella is texting me right now. <laughs> oh God. She's saying that, um, we, we were talking about TikTok lives versus Instagram lives. 
And uh, my friend Sai was telling me about how TikTok people like really try and troll you on TikTok. And he was like, if someone asks you to read something, like really read it out in your head because they do like phonetical scary things that can really screw you over. Because of course you don't want to say anything hurtful or rude. Ah. Um, oh yeah, and then after my appointment over at Penguin, which like also, yeah, I, the paperback is coming out. So look, paperback, this is hard. Ooh, not great for the beach. Um, but uh, after my appointment at Penguin, I, I went to Times Square because this is really, this is so cool, but there's a, a huge bit, like corner billboard uh, that is showing the Todd Snyder Pride campaign that I appeared in. And so I was like, oh, I'll do like a reel where I like do it's like pinch thing where I'm showing it on my phone and then I open it like unpinch and it's up in Times Square. It'll be like a moment. Um, and so I get to Times Square and Times Square is cuckoo. Like I, you know those scary photos of like pandemic Times Square and there's like nobody there, which is really freaky. But um, today it was crowded and it was hot. And there was, I was like trying to film this billboard and for some reason on my phone, I couldn't like, you know when you try and film the TV or something and it's like flickering or like you try and film a fan and it looks like this. So the screen of the thing w looked crazy. So I was like, all right, I came to Times Square and I can't film it, but that's okay. And there was this man next to me screaming bloody murder just about God knows what. And I was like, ah, oh, New York, sweet New York giving me all of its New Yorkiness. And then um, after that, I came back to my apartment and did some more work. So my days are filled with just like class, PT, gym, another club, another club. <laughs> okay, Lady Gaga reference. So yeah, that's what I've been getting up to. Um, I wanna do like the Q&A thing here. So I'm gonna click on these Q&A photos, or wait, uh, things. Ah, oh, okay, so I'm gonna answer this one. Okay. All right, so uh, this person is asking, um, how does it work when a dancer gets hurt? Do you get paid leave? That's a really, really damn good question. Okay, so I got hurt working, so I'm eligible for workers' comp. Workers' comp is like insurance paid uh, by your employer, essentially, just in case people get hurt on the job. So when I'm in season with the company, like right now, um, I am paid workers' comp, which is um, unfortunately quite a fraction of our salary, but it is better than nothing considering I'm unable to work, you know? Um, and then I, I've worked really hard to create a world for myself in which I can seek other opportunities uh, within my creative space. So things like writing, things like um, creating music, things like social media and making videos and whatever. Um, and that's been a great way for me to earn extra money as opposed to just having my workers comp paychecks. And I'm very, very grateful to myself and to the people who have given me these opportunities for hustling so hard to make sure that I have as many opportunities as possible because it's hard, you get hurt and it takes a long time like, I'm going to be injured for like a year. So I, I, I had better be hustling. You know what I'm saying? Girls got expenses. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's a really good question. And it, it's really hard, but, um, but I'm going to be fine, thankfully. All right. Um, best mental exercises to get over an injury. All right, best mental exercises to get over an injury. Um, I have a therapist. I have a, a psychotherapist, a psychologist that I speak with every week. Um, and I still am like trying to find the groove of, of psychology appointments or whatever or my, with my therapist. Like I've been doing it for, for like maybe a year and a half now, two years maybe. And sometimes I catch myself not wanting to be completely forthright or open um and then i'm like well this is the whole freaking point of this and then i sort of dig in a little bit deeper and that's been really helpful during this time and 
Staying busy for me is always a great way to uh, manage um, depression, frankly, and friendship and all that, all the, all the things I like. Um, when do you think you'll be strong enough to perform again? All right, so I was slated to perform in Seoul, Korea in August, and I actually just had to uh, give the official word that I won't be back for that there was a sort of slim hope that I might be able to like shuffle around in a, in a you know, long dress or something. Um, but it's, it's not worth the stress of feeling obligated to perform, especially when I'm not gonna be at a level of dancing that I see fit. If I'm coming back to, to perform, you better believe you're gonna get a good show. And if I don't feel like I can give that, I'm not doing it. Uh, and that's tea. <laughs> All right, next question. Alright, um, how are you handling the fear factor post-injury? That's a, all, these are wonderful questions, really, like, correct. Um, hold on. Um, so the fear factor, like the physical relationship with fear that you have after you injure yourself is quite strong. So um, I talked to some friends who have had serious knee injuries about this and they said like everything just scared them and I feel the same. Like I'm going down the stairs to the subway and I'm like gripping onto the, the railings and I'm hoping no one like pushes me or bumps me or anything. I'm very aware of the people around me um, and I, I'm just hyper aware of it, all of it. <laughs> And it's scary, you know, like sometimes if I move too quickly, it hurts a little bit. And then I'm like, ah, shit. Um, and it's, it's difficult. So I'm going to try and, and just cool it and let my body do what it does. Because it's at this point, it's healed. It's just weak. And uh, the like brain knee connection isn't quite there. So it, it would be really surprising if I re-injured it at this point because it is fully healed. All right. Um, how did it happen? I know you were in the middle of the Nutcracker. I came to see the show that night after. Okay, so um, for those of you who don't know, I was doing the Nutcracker when I ruptured my patellar tendon. And a rupture of a tendon means it basically like shreds or pops off the bone that it's supposed to be attached to. So I had like a jelly leg basically. And um, I was doing a double assemblée, which is a jump where you do like a running start and you throw a leg up, you turn twice in the air with your legs together and then you land. On the takeoff is when my patellar tendon ruptured and uh, I was trying to jump super high and I was having tendinosis for like 20 years, honestly. It's been a long time coming. So it, it was a bit of a ticking time bomb and uh, I know my body very well and, uh, and I knew like I was pushing it for sure. Um, that being said, I actually, I forgot to tell y'all, st I started a thing called shockwave therapy. And what they do is they essentially like, sh like elect, it's like sort of like a cattle prod actually. It's like rapid fire um, shocks of uh, electricity. And they do it right on the tendon. So I'm doing that on my good knee now and I'm doing that once a week and that will stimulate um, like heat and new blood and just action to the area to try and make sure that my good knee, which is also not doing great, um, can get back to cooking, you know? All right. Um, have your employers, directors at ABT been supportive throughout the healing process? Um, that everyone's been unbelievably supportive. like. Uh, I don't think anybody has ever seen anything like that um, in their careers, honestly. It was a highly dramatic injury. Uh, it was a full house of the Nutcracker, like kids, families, sold out show. Um, yeah, it was, it was dramatic. Um, yes, everyone's been beautiful to me, like so much care, love, support, and like, I, I feel like people can tell when I'm like, I don't want to talk about this right now, you know? So they're like, okay, good, see ya, you know? Which is also lovely. Um, all right, what am I most excited for in the next couple months? Ooh, yes. I 
well, first of all, I'm excited for the paperback of my book to come out. Like, it's, I still can't believe I have a freaking book. That is just the coolest thing ever. And then um, I am going away uh, to a writer's retreat. So since I can't dance so much right now, I'm trying to flex my creativity in other ways, choreography and writing. And so I'm going away for two weeks this month and uh, I'll be writing a, I, I don't want to talk about what I'm writing yet. So stay tuned, but I've got some writing to do. All right, what else? Any other questions y'all? Ah, woof, yeah, okay. Uh, this person says, grief was a huge emotion I had to navigate during my injury. Would you say that was something you had to navigate while healing? What was slash is that like for you? So um, it's funny, grief has been sort of a theme like over the past couple of days. I, I watched this episode of this science fiction show called The Orville yesterday, and it's like a comedy sci-fi show created by the creator of Family Guy, Seth MacFarlane, uh, whom I adore. And, um, and the show was very much like every character's process, like the way they process grief and like grief, hate, forgiveness, all these things. And like, I, I've spent a lot of time as I think about how my injury happened, like how I'm feeling now and the road to recovery. And I don't think I've processed much yet, frankly. And like, I think depression and grief are very different. Um, for me at least, and I could just be talking about my ass, but there were days when I was depressed. I was like, I can't do what I love and I don't feel like I'm achieving anything, which is something, frankly, I've enjoyed my whole life. The feeling of working towards a show, doing it. You have the satisfaction of applause at the end of a thing you worked hard for. Like it's very simple really. So now I'm really struggling with, um, feeling like I'm not doing anything, even though my days are packed, you know? Uh, it's a very strange thing for me because I like to, I like to work. I really genuinely do, and I work hard. Um, so that being said, grief, I think, is a different thing. Like, grief, it, it comes with um, loss, perhaps, and I, and I don't think I've gotten over the hump to understand, like, what I've lost. And I'm slowly realizing like what it is that makes me sad. Um, but yeah, currently there's like rare depression days now, which is great. I'm overall just like a happy person also. Um, but I think I'll, I'll get to the processing of this whole thing and it'll be a wonderful learning experience as it has been thus far. Sip. Yum. Once again, uh, it, this is a hippie whiskey. You should try it if, if you're of age. Um, ah, this is a wonderful question too. Okay. I'm going to do two more questions and then, you know, we just, we got to move on. All right. Um, do you have flashbacks of your injury? Do you go to there often in your head when you, you know, like, does it pop into your head? So this is a really common thing for people who have a traumatic injury is it, it like takes over their vision and it, um, uh, it becomes a part of you that, that pops up unwanted. Uh, yes, I had that like crazy, like the first day or two after my injury. And um, I remember we were back at the hotel after the show which, in which I had injured myself and Isabella's husband, Dan, um, sent me an article about a basketball player, I believe. And I read it and it was fascinating. He had done the same thing to his knee. And um, he was saying the more he talked about it with people, the less he hit it, uh, the less sort of, I don't know, furtive it felt like it didn't feel so, he was able to share the emotions with groups of people. So it's like, you're not just being completely stooped and weighed down by this thing that only you can understand. So that is why I made the decision to be super open about my injury and my recovery, like with the internet, first of all, with all my friends and fans and family. Um, it was really important to me to like say the words that are hard to say out loud and many times. And that has completely like beat the monster back. <laughs> 
And because I remember those flashbacks were freaking intense and they would like they would take my breath away. Um, and and after a while, they just like the more I told my story, told my story, talk to this person, talk to this person, do a thing. Um, they went away. And I feel completely able to remember the trauma of the situation without having that bump of fear, which is freaking awesome. All right, one last question. <laughs> okay. <sighs> All right, well, you know, there aren't any other questions that I really like. <sighs> so, that said, um, what else do I have to report to you? Nothing really. Um, I'm gonna try to do these every once in a while, but cheers, happy Wednesday. I was gonna try to make a cup of tea, but I didn't have any decaf tea, so I went for the whiskey instead. All right, thank you for, for all the love and support that you all give me, and uh, you know, stay tuned, I've got good stuff cooking, so woohoo!